we're very opposed to the authoritarian nature of Cuba. But you know, you got it's unfair to simply say everything is bad. You know, when Fidel Castro came into office, you know what he did? He had a massive literacy program. Is that a bad thing? Even though Fidel Castro did it? There's a lot of dissidents imprisoned in, in Cuba. That's right, and we condemn that. But I remember, for some reason or other, being very excited when, when Fidel Castro made the revolution in Cuba. I was a kid and I remember reading that. And it was just seemed right and appropriate that poor people were rising up against rather ugly rich people. Absolutely. It's the same thing, you know, they never learn. You may recall way back in, when was it, 1961, they invaded Cuba. And everybody was totally convinced that Castro was the worst guy in the world, that all the Cuban people were going to rise up in rebellion against Fidel Castro. They had forgot that he educated their kids, gave them health care, totally transformed the society. You know, not to say that uh, Fidel Castro or Cuba are perfect. They are certainly not. But just because Ronald Reagan dislikes these people does not mean to say that the people in their own nations feel the same way. I think in that same... Uh, interview, he praised what he called the revolution of values in Cuba and talked about how people were working for the common good, not for themselves. I just couldn't disagree more. You know, if the values are that you oppress people, you disappear people, you imprison people, even kill people for expressing their opinions, for expressing freedom of speech, that is not the kind of revolution of values that I ever want to see anywhere. I want to go and back Medicaid, to your comments, please. We'll the, get to the Donald Trump is the in a Castro moment. That in, and Cuba, no, of course, their economy is terrible. You're right. It is a dictatorship. They did have a good health, do have a decent health care system uh, and a decent educational system. A lot of people have left Cuba for better dreams to fulfill their aspirations. Uh, so, no, the Cuban economy is a disaster. No, I do not praise uh, Fidel Castro. We come from Cuba, but we know what socialism a Marxist socialism can do to a country. When I left Cuba in, the in 1961, Cuba had the second highest per capita income in the Americas. And it had the second highest literacy rate in the Americas. Today, Cuba is second from the bottom. Only Haiti is below Cuba in, in, in per capita income. And so that gives you an idea how uh, socialism can come in and destroy a capitalistic society and take it from very high level and, and bring it down. So now everybody in Cuba is at the same level, yeah. So, so there's no such thing as class separation, but everybody is at the poor, poorest level you can find. Uh, socialism is really somewhat, sort of like a middle point between capitalism and um, communism. And so the communists knew many, many years ago that in order to go from a capitalist society to a communist society, you had to have the people in the capitalist country accept the concept of distribution of wealth. And the distribution of wealth would then, if you could get that thought into the minds of the people, especially working with young people, because it sounds good, right? You might have, we're going to distribute the wealth. If you can get them to accept that, then it's a much, which is socialism, it's a much easier step to then go to communism from there. It's very difficult to go from capitalism directly to communism. So socialism is that midpoint that it's been that's strategically set up really by the Marxist communists. Socialism, socialism is is not a just for justice. It's accumulation of your property. And once they take control of what you do, what you can do, they're taking away a fundamental part of a person.